Well, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming out. I know you're all ready for some football. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about three things, I think. I'm going to talk to you about facilities, fan experience, and I'll talk to you a little bit about football. Um, three Fs. First, let's start with facilities. We've got a lot of things going on at LSU right now. Um, we're totally renovating our, our football operations building. Um, we're putting in all new offices, new training room, new locker room, new players lounge, and we're building a cafeteria to feed all our athletes in, which will be, I think, a great uh, benefit, not only to the athletes from a nutrition standpoint, um, but even in the long term of their health. I mean, part of our job is to educate them for the rest of their lives and try to teach them how to eat properly. So I, I think from a recruiting standpoint and from a nutrition standpoint, our nutrition center is going to be a great addition to our, to our campus. Um, we're spending close to $30 million running, renovating the football ops building. It's only 11 years old. Uh, and when it was built, it was probably the finest facility in the country. And um, at the time we started the renovation, it was probably the, uh, it, it was not one of the top facilities in the country. And just in our league, um, almost everyone has renovated or built a new football ops building. So that's what we're doing for football right now. That'll be a great addition. We're also building a uh, weight room for our baseball teams. And um, that weight room will be right in right field of uh, Alex Fox Stadium. Um, it'll be a facility that will also house a small locker room where our minor league and major league baseball players can come back and work out with our team uh, when they're not in season. Um, we think that's great for our, the culture of our baseball program to have the alumni that are playing professional ball around to enhance the culture of what's going on. So I think that's a great coup. Um, we're also building an indoor batting cage for our softball team. Our softball program, and again in right field, will have a new batting cage. And it's also, you know, softball infields are relatively small, so there'll be an indoor infield where they'll be able to take ground balls any time, no matter what the weather is. So uh, that's probably one of the first of its kind for a softball program in the country. Um, we've also renovated our uh, our indoor track. Our indoor track facility has been all re redone. Our track offices have been moved to the field house, totally redone. The track programs offices are unbelievable. You wouldn't believe it if you saw them. Um, projects on the horizon. One of the last uh, facilities that we really haven't done a lot to improve is the PMAC. And uh, you all know we've got a terrific basketball coach and uh, he's done a great job recruiting. And one of the things that we have to do to keep that program growing is um, enhance the PMAC. The PMAC's, I think, 35 years old. Not much has been done to it in 35 years. So we do have some plans to uh, add a weight room to that facility for our basketball programs. Um, I'd like to add club seating to that, to the facility where we would lose a little seating capacity but add club space, um, premium seating. Our, our fans like premium seating. So uh, that's something that I think that you're going to see in the horizon. Um, the next thing i like to talk about a little bit is our fan experience. In Tiger Stadium, we've replaced every television set and added many more to inside the facility. You know, we used to have these big old box TVs. Well, they're all gone. We've got flat screen TVs all around the stadium. Uh, they've also all been replaced in the PMAC, and they've all been replaced at Alex Fox Stadium. Um, I think that's important. We've our concession stands. We've added new concession stands because one of the complaints that we've always had is that the lines are too long, and by the time I got my food, it was cold, and all those kind of things that athletic directors get complaints about. So we've tried to address them. Um, we've added more concession stands, and we've added more people to serve on a more rapid basis. We've also renovated nearly every restroom in Tiger Stadium, and that's really important for the women. You know, women complain about restrooms, and rightfully so, so I think that that'll be a great enhancement to what we've done. You've probably also read that we've added an area, I, for lack of better terms, it's going to be a sports bar inside Tiger Stadium. The lower level of the south uh, end zone, we used to have old dorm rooms in there, and we knocked them down. We knocked down all the old dorm rooms and created a huge space down there. 
And um, so we've created a sports bar where we're going to have big screen TVs, serve beer in, beer in there, and uh, I think it'll be an enhancement for our fans. It'll open two and a half hours before the game. Uh, people will be able to encouraged to go in there. It'll be dry if it's raining. It'll be cooler. It'll be, it'll be much cooler than being outside. So um, I think it'll be a great enhancement to Tiger Stadium, and we'll see as we go forward. We may create some more of those spots around Tiger Stadium. As you all know, the SEC um, refuses or disallows the sale of alcohol in the public areas of the stadium. So you have to create club-type areas to, to sell alcohol. I really believe in the future that that rule will be lifted and we'll be able to sell alcohol throughout beer, throughout the, uh, throughout the stadium, and I think that's something that's going to happen and uh, will happen probably, I can't put a time on it, but I think it's going to happen in the near future. Um, last, I'm going to talk a little bit about football. Something I know everyone's ready for. Everyone's ready for some football. All these coaches are ready to go. Uh, it's hard to believe the summer's gone. Um, I'm really excited about our football program, and I'm really pleased with the way Ed Ogeron has handled it. He's done a terrific job uh, with disciplining our kids, instilling a culture of hard work. Um, he's a terrific motivator, and he's an outstanding recruiter. Um, Looking at our roster, and I know we, the other day we printed what the first team roster is going to be for our, the depth chart. Well, I went down that depth chart, we only have three seniors that are starting. It's a pretty relatively young team when you only have three seniors start. Um, he's done a really good job of filling some holes that we had, particularly on the defensive line. Uh, one of our, in my opinion, one of our weaknesses last year was we had some good defensive linemen, we just didn't have enough of them. Um, this year, I think you'll see our depths much better on the defensive side of the ball, not only at line in the line, but also at lineback. Um, we're going to have a very good defense, there's no doubt in my mind. Although, we only have, I think on defense, one senior starter, and that's a safety. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, I think you're going to be pleased. I think you're going to see three and four wide receivers playing. I think, uh, I think Joe Burrow is a is going to be an outstanding quarterback. But I'll tell you this, Miles, Miles Brennan is not far behind. They both throw the ball well. Miles has got a rocket of an arm. Joe runs, runs a little bit better. He's a, he's a better runner. Miles is still about 180 pounds. He's really skinny. Um, six foot four, 180 pounds. But, but he can spin it. He can really throw the ball. We, we're really deep at wide receiver. We've got about nine guys that can uh, run and throw. I'm an old quarterback, I'll tell you what. We've got some receivers that are 6'5 and 6'6 that I sure would love to throw them to when I was playing. Um, everyone talks about our offensive line. I think our offensive line is going to be better than people think. Uh, has some good depth, um, got some good experience, um, and I think that our offensive line is going to surprise people. Um, we've got a transfer senior kicker that I think will enhance our kicking game. You all know that our, our kicking game was not the greatest in the world last year probably cost us a game or two. Um, I think this kid is going to be poised and, uh, and will make some kicks for us. That will make a difference. I'm really excited about the football season. It should be a lot of fun. Um, and I'm also excited about the future. Ed's done a, doing a great job recruiting people. Um, there's some great talent in the state of Louisiana, and uh, as long as we can keep getting those kids to come to LSU, we're going to have a good program. Um, Ed's focused on the state of Louisiana. And um, that's what we should always be. Uh, so what I'd really like to do is uh, answer any questions that you have. If you have a few questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. And we'll get the microphone to you. Raise your hand. Hey, uh, I know that you did a lot of work on getting the player, I think his name's uh, Christian, Christian Fulton. Fulton. Yeah, back with the team. Can you kind of talk about that process that y'all had to go through to get him reinstated? Sure. Um, first of all, I want to tell you, Christian is an unbelievably great kid. He's from here in New Orleans. Uh, you know, like I mentioned before, I, I, I played football a long time ago, 100 years ago. And if someone had told me that I couldn't play football for two years, I don't know if I would have had anywhere near the maturity that he had and the way he handled it. He, he never missed class, never missed a practice. 
never missed anything. He, he, he handled himself with the utmost with class. Not only that, but I think we drug tested him over 25 times and he never failed a drug test. So the process, you know, the, the process was we, we had a phone call with the NCA and um, on that phone call we laid out our case and um, it was rejected. Some of the points that were made during that case uh, probably weren't made as well as they could have been made. So my staff and our legal team, legal team and compliance, had another another thought, and they brought it to me, and I said, "This can work. Let's give it a shot." So we wrote it up and we sent it in, and uh, we got it in front of another committee, and uh, fortunately they agreed with us. And uh, it, it was very simple that the penalty that they had assigned for his crime was not the right penalty that they assigned. And it's, you gotta understand the NCA can be pretty ambiguous at a lot of times. There's a lot of rules in there, there's a lot of ambiguity. And I could see why they assigned the penalty that they did, but they agreed with our argument that it should have been only a one year penalty. So that's, in a nutshell, that's basically how it worked. And uh, um, I'm really happy for him. He's a very popular player on our team. Uh, forget about the fact that he's a really good player, but he's popular and um, he, he learned his lesson. Believe me, he learned his lesson and he handled it with such class and dignity that I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy for him and, and for the team that he's able to play. Okay. Well, thank you all. I appreciate you coming out, and uh, I hope I see you in Tiger Stadium. Go Tigers!